So Fandango has just recently released its top 15 of the most anticipated movies for the summer of 2016 list. Now, this list is voted by fans, so it's what the people actually think are anticipated, and it's broken into three different categories. You have action, family, and comedy, with five movies being on each one of those lists. So we're just going to kind of <clears throat> jump in, see if we agree. Are these movies anticipated, or uh, are just a bunch of crazy people doing the votes? I mean, you can't argue with the vote, other than by saying that there was only 20 people voting anyway. Um, the people that happened yeah, to Yeah, I think we're care. in the hundreds of thousands of people who voted for this. That's a pretty good poll. Great. That's actually a better yeah. poll than most it's national polls. Let's jump into the movies. Let's discuss them and see if we agree. So I was saying we would start with family, because that's one of the three categories. You have family, action, and comedy. So let's start with family. Now, the number five most anticipated movie for family for the summer of 2016 is Teenage Mutant Ninja, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, hmm. Out of the Shadows. Now, okay. I thought that was kind of an interesting one for family because I believe it is a PG-13 rated movie. Yeah, I thought the they, were, one they were trying to target a, a bit of an older, like kind of a, yeah. I mean, it's a Michael Bay movie. So I was actually thinking, hey, this sounds like it's targeting a, you know transformers crowd which mm -hmm. it, it's not it necessarily was, yeah. super it, old no it was it was totally it's tried he's trying to play on the nostalgia of everybody who grew up in the 80s with transformers ninja turtles it, i'm, I'm just saying though that crowd could include yeah. you know not necessarily very old teenagers it can be a a family you could, movie you could take a 10 year old to this movie probably and be just yeah. fine but, younger than that, but, but not what you usually think of with a family movie when you're talking about family movie. So that was number five. I, I I don't really think it should be on any of these lists at all. I didn't really enjoy the first one. And I'm a huge Ninja Turtles fan, so it was really I mean, disappointing. There are I do enjoy uh, indications that the second one will be better. Not great, yeah, but better. Steve Off and Rocksteady will be in there. So I mean, of course, Frag, we don't know that much. Frag. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll be fun. But moving on to number four was Ice Age Collision Course. I don't know what number Ice Age is. This is, but I, if I had to guess, I'd say it's like five. Yeah, I mean, and they're just like, turning them out now. Come they're on. not even numbering either, them anymore. You kind die of... during the Ice Age, or you die during the Ice Age. It means the Earth froze over. They're like, life stops pretty much at that point. No, no, you life goes on, Brian. Minutes. Otherwise, there wouldn't have, have been minutes. life after. Yeah, like in the oceans, there was life. Most land mammals died. No, the the mammals were the ones that survived. Oh, it's the most dinosaurs land mammals. that died. Yeah, that's true. The dinosaurs. Yeah, okay, whatever. The mammals still, were the ones I mean, that fur. You know, small. You're winding things down by now. Come on. <laughs> we don't need five Ice Age movies. I think this one, the, like the big thing is like the squirrel goes to outer space. Hmm. It's not only is it prehistoric times, but there's spaceships. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, once you stop going by the numbering of your movies that you had you started numbering yeah it's you've probably just been going on too long but hey you know obviously people are anticipating it they were it is a big series of movies and it's family it, it is family movies it is family it is totally family and this is a cgi Kids movie want to see it i guess which three of the five on this list are cgi movies really four out of the five if you can, can if you count teenage mutant ninja turtles as a cgi movie because it the four main characters are all CGI, but yeah. So, yeah. Mm. But so Ice Age is number four. Number three is Alice Through the Looking Glass. Now this is, uh, if you remember, Tim Burton, I believe, did an Alice in Wonderland. This is the sequel to that. So Johnny Depp will be returning. And I didn't really think the first one was a kids movie. It was just kind of creepy and weird. And I don't know if this one will be a family movie. Would you take your kids to see Alice Through the Looking Glass? No. Mostly because I don't want to see it. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think they care either. <laughs> I didn't like the first one. I didn't understand why they're having a second one. But well, you know. Because they can milk uh, a product. I don't know. So number two, these are the ones I really find like our family movies. We have Secret Life of Pets, which is another CGI, probably DreamWorks or Pixar, one of the two, and it'll make a bazillion dollars because it seems like one of those super happy, family-friendly kids movies and who doesn't want to think about what a dog is saying when you're I've, not around I, I, that's the I've heard of it I've seen trailers for it at all the other family movies the very few family movies that I have taken my kids to uh, they were advertising it and it looked 
like something they'd enjoy. Yeah. Might enjoy yeah, it's, too. It's, it's a total kids movie. It's probably hopefully something like if you have to take your kids to, you won't hate yourself, which is kind of what studios are doing because they realize, hey, if we make the parents not hate it, yeah, they'll bring their kids. So. I mean, there's definitely some some references to things that the kids wouldn't get. Like at some point, the the in the trailer, for instance, the dogs are um, listening to a rather obscure System of a Down song. So mm-hmm. yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. Whatever. Yeah. So that, that might not be that bad. And then the number one most anticipated movie uh, for the family genre of 2016 is going to be Finding Dory, which is the sequel to Finding Nemo. But the blue fish is trying to find somebody. Huh. Dory. Well, that would be... Dory was the... Yeah, was the fish that... The forgetful fish that helped yeah, them out. Like yeah. I'm surprised. So, that's I, I guess because it's a big Disney movie... And Finding Nemo was big, but like Finding, Finding Nemo was Nemo, a long was time ago. Long, Finding Nemo, yeah, that was over ten years ago, way over ten years ago. But Finding Nemo was one of those movies that came out. I want to say pretty close to when Shrek came out, and really started pushing the CGI movies to the forefront. Yeah, there was other ones like Monsters Inc. and different and Toy Story and stuff like that. But I think Finding Nemo was the breakout hit along with Shrek that let studios believe, hey, we could dedicate a whole chunk of our studio to this. And it would be a very profitable thing. So that's really when we started seeing these annual kids CGI movies coming out all the time. It was after Finding Nemo, Shrek, Monsters Inc., you know, Toy Story, all those. So yeah, I mean, actually, was... Monsters Inc. was that was that animation or no? That was CGI, wasn't it? Yeah, Monsters but... Inc. too. I think was like I think Monsters Inc. and Finding Nemo were both uh, Pixar Disney movies too. Yeah, yeah. And they were good movies, so, you know, you can't hate too much. So that was our five family movies that are anticipated for this year. I will see um, probably Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Even though I said I didn't really want to see it, I'm going to see it just because I'm a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan. So, Michael Bay, darn you, you've got my money. But uh, let's move on. Let's talk the comedy movies. So number five, Mike and Dave need wedding dates. This is the Zac Afron movie. It does not look very funny to me. Might be funny here or there, but just it's kind of how I feel about it. It was heavily publicized. I believe it comes out in May, so I don't know. It just really didn't seem all that good to me. Um, then we have at number four, The Nice Guys, which is actually a Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe team up where their 70s era cops run in the streets and apparently hilarity ensues. Hmm. It really just honestly sounds like they're trying to rip off the other guys. And then say, we're not ripping off the other guys. We're putting it in the 70s. So. See, I thought that this was going to be more, or of, a more of a parody of uh, Goodfellas by the title. But no, no, they're, they're, they're some sort of cops, I believe. So, I mean, I guess maybe like a Starsky and Hutch ripoff. Hmm. <laughs> That's what we're getting here. So, eh, you know, it is what it is. That's number four. Number three is Neighbors 2, the movie that did not need a sequel because it was uh, mediocre. Like, there were some funny moments to Neighbors, the original one. And this one is just like, all right, we did a fraternity. Let's just do a sorority moves next door. Yeah, that'll be great. Let's keep, try, you know, going back to the well on this one. So Easy enough to churn out, I guess. I don't know. Like, yeah, Did anyone watch the first one? I don't I know anyone. I watched half of it, and then I just, just never really, never really. Cared. I guess someone must Nothing have watched it because they it made a sequel. Moments. Yeah, it had its moments. It wasn't bad. And Seth Rogen is a big star, so he's in the movie. You know, Zac Efron was in the first one. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of how I feel about Neighbors 2. Really, that's how I feel about the majority of this list for comedy. It just seems like a dud summer for comedy. But let's move it on to number two, and that's Central Intelligence. Now, this is probably the one on the list, if I if you had to say, gun to my head, which you're going to go see one of these comedy movies which one are you going to go see? And it would be Central Intelligence. It is teaming up Dwayne The Rock Johnson with Kevin Hart. And I just think Kevin Hart is hilarious. And The Rock is actually not a bad actor. So if he plays the straight man and Hart does his normal craziness, I think it actually could be a pretty decent movie. And you guessed it. I believe they're spies for the CIA because it's called Central Intelligence. So that one actually looks not too bad. I don't mind uh, those two teaming up. That'll be pretty cool. You know what? That, it, it sounds kind of like a a weird uh I, now i'm not saying the storyline but the the matchup sounds kind of like a rush hour rush matchup hour. yeah yeah well, it's which rush hour is great the, 
yeah, that's the traditional buddy cop. You know, you have one, you know, kind of crazy one, more one more straight laced. You know. Well, really, I, I was just thinking. I was thinking because you have the 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 comedian the and the, the actions and the action star that's known for like particular fighting, like hand to hand combat. Because you know, The Rock from from wrestling, Jackie Chan with with uh, kung fu, and then you put them with yeah. the, the comedy I mean, guy it's like 48 hours that's the old and movie. it's about some kind of like big international thing so. Eddie Murphy. yeah it, it, it should be cool I, i'm like i said if i had to pick any one of these movies to watch i would that would be central intelligence so i am looking forward to that it does seem like it'd be a funny one um maybe i'll wait until it hits red box though Sorry. that's kind of the case <laughs> a lot. you know there's there's very few comedy movies that are going to get me into the theater to just, yeah, you just, it's just not an atmosphere that you need to go to. And I, I enjoy comedy movies. You know, when I when I watch them at home, when I have nothing else to do, or whatever. It's just, it's mm-hmm. not like, it's not something I, I care usually to put a lot of money down. Now, on the other hand, I did enjoy going and wanted to go see the Rush Hour movies in theaters. So if this is like Rush Hour, then yeah, maybe. Yeah, we were kids back then. It was a little different. So Well, I was, you know, a teenager when 2 came out. I guess that's true, yeah. Well, let's move on to the number one comedy movie that's most anticipated. And that is Ghostbusters, not surprisingly. I actually was a lot more excited about this movie until I started seeing like the trailers and stuff and hearing about all the people who started pulling out of this project. So I'm kind of nervous for it. Definitely something that I will watch eventually at some point. I just can't say that I'm going to head to the theaters and plunk down 20 bucks to watch this one. Yeah, I just wish they handled the setup differently. I... Like, rather than a reboot, they could have just gone with a continuation. Like, a yeah. different cast, well, but, I think you know, linked it in. Like, these are these guys' daughters. That's originally what it was going to be. In the yeah, that would have made sense. That would have made a lot of sense. And it would have been a really easy... Qu- or even just one of them was, like, the niece of one of the other guys. That would have made a lot of sense. And then you show one of the original crew do a little cameo early on, yeah, like hand I, over I, the business. Bill Murray cameo. I mean, how hard would that have been? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Bill Murray will do anything, it seems like. So, you know, it's just one of those things that just didn't quite work out. But, eh, you know, we'll see. It, still could, it still could be a very good movie. The cast is still there. The original cast that actually got me excited, uh, Melissa McCarthy, Kristen Wiig, I believe, are the two headliners for that group. Could be good. Very, very possible. Like I said, I'll still watch it eventually. I'm just not going to go to the theaters to watch this one. So, so out of the, all the ones we've talked about, I would not go see any of these so far. So we're 10 movies down in our top 15 list, and I wouldn't see any of them. But things are about to change because we're about to get into action. Now, this is really where the summer shines. The summer blockbusters are these huge, grandiose action movies that cost $100 million to make but yet still make you about eh, $400 million back if you're doing something good. And some of these could go well above that. So let's start off with number five, and that is Suicide Squad. Mm. I am excited for this movie. This is totally one that I would want to see in theaters. A little less excited after I heard that they did those reshoots, but still not enough to make me not want to see this one in theaters. I think this would be a cool action one. And action movies, I think that's what theaters are made for more. Because those big explosions, you want to see everything big, the sound, you want to have, feel it while you're here, you know, and that's that's something you can get. And I can imagine the Suicide Squad would probably deliver pretty well with that. So, yeah, I, I mean that's that's one too that's very likely to make back its money unless it gets abysmal reviews like Superman v. Uh, uh, it'll still make Batman. money. It'll still make money. Will Batman Smith in that movie. It'll still make movie. Uh, well, Batman vs. Superman made a ton of money too. <laughs> it had a horrible review. So reviews don't seem to matter to most people. They don't matter. Did it make a whole. I know that it, it dropped off really quickly. Did they make enough early on to, to make back their cost? I want to say over 600 million. Oh, really? What it made. Yeah, so it made a ton okay. of money worldwide. <laughs> worldwide. Yeah, it was fine. Uh, number four, and I don't agree with the spot this is in. It definitely deserves to be on this list, but I don't agree with the spot that this number four is on. And that's X Men Apocalypse. Oh I think wow! This should be yeah. number two. Yeah, um, I'm surprised it's not two or one. I'm almost looking forward to most of all this summer because I've totally enjoyed the the I guess the young X Men series that they've done. The first class was amazing. Uh, Days of Future Past was even better. And if they keep going, and it looks like they can, we're gonna see the best of this trilogy, this set trilogy. Um, 
to date. Well, so in, in, in general, really the the apocalypse uh, story arc from X Men is is one of the ones that I remember pretty well, and it was always well, you remember like it a as huge a event. Cartoon. Yeah, I know, but it, and it shows up in in various versions. Well, but apocalypse keeps popping up in the yeah, the comics, and so. it's some of my favorite parts of of X Men when when they deal with apocalypse because that's yeah. it's huge. <laughs> it is. It, it was a it was a landscape changing event when Apocalypse showed up, uh, and it, it should be a really cool one. And Oscar Isaac as Apocalypse is looking amazing. Uh, James McAvoy is going to be bald, <laughs> so we get our real Professor X. And they're introducing our fan favorites like Jean Grey. Uh, they're reintroducing Cyclops. They're bringing uh, Jubilee into the fold. So there's a lot of really cool things. Yeah, you know what? That might also be though why it's not higher on the list. Maybe some people are. Uh, one with it's been anticipated so long. Maybe people are almost forgetting now for some reason. But also, I was gonna say just um the cast change up at this point. Mm, um, that could be a little bit, but just you just, you just this curving it a little bit down. I don't know. Yeah. But then number three is Jason Bourne, and so that should actually be pretty cool. I I have always enjoyed the Bourne movies. Not something that I've ever felt like I needed to go to the theaters to see. So I would push it down a couple spots on this yeah. list. But yeah, Jason I'm surprised Boy, it's that high And up. this is the the reuniting of Matt Damon and I want to say Paul Greengrass. I could be wrong on that lane, but the, the original director from the original trilogy of Bourne movies. So um, they're going to get back together and hopefully we'll, we'll get a cool action movie out of it. But then we have number two, and this I just find ridiculous, Independence Day Resurgence. So Independence Day 2, the Independence Day without Will Smith. I think that's just what they should call it. Independence Day without Will Smith. That's really what the title of this should be. You, but yeah, it's apparently going to be big. I can believe that being anticipated. Um, just the stuff that they did for its promotion and people remembering back when the the first Independence Day came out. And that's still one of those kind of phenomena movies, even though it wasn't necessarily the greatest work of, uh, oh, heck no, of cinema. Heck no. But, but it, it was a big deal. It was, it's it still a big deal. Right time. Yeah, it came out at the right time, had the right story, just, you know, did everything the way it, it did it right, even though it didn't have the highest qual- caliber, like, writing, had excellent acting, it didn't it didn't have the, the greatest plot of all time, but it had a good enough one, and, and they, they blew up the White House. it all together well. <laughs> so, there's something to be said about putting a movie together well, and that's what they did, so, you know, you can't hate on it. And then our number one movie, Brendan, go ahead and tell us. Brendan hasn't even seen this list, but he knows what the number one anticipated movie for the action genre will be for the summer of 2016. Do As I know? By Fandango. If you I, don't get this one, Brendan, you're off the show. I mean, I thought it would be X-Men Apocalypse, to be honest with you. Okay, what other movie did I not say that's just as, as huge in that stratosphere, if not bigger? Civil War. Thank you. I didn't want to have to kick you off the show, Brendan, <laughs> but I was going to have to kick you off if you didn't get Civil War. Yeah, so Captain America Civil War... It's pretty much Avengers 3. I don't care what they say. You don't bring that many heroes together and call it Captain America. I mean, I know it was part of the cycle, like, oh, it's Captain America's time for, turn for a new movie. Yeah, but it's still, it's Avengers 3. It's and I always thought it was odd that they were doing Civil War As within Captain a Captain America rather than being Avengers, because that just seems like yeah. a straight... Or just well, it's Civil even War. bigger don't than an Avengers Avenger. storyline. Civil yeah, War don't is... call it Avengers. Just call it Civil yeah. War. It should be Marvel Civil War, just like it was with the comics. Like, come on. And that would have been fine, but eh, you know what? They're calling Captain America Civil War, and I am excited. I will go watch it in the theaters. Am I more excited for Captain America than I am for X-Men? No. About equal. Actually, a little more for X-Men, but it's it's still right up there. So that was the list of the top 15 movies that are most anticipated for this summer as rated by Fandango users, I guess, because people use fandango and voted for it um pretty much it's a pretty solid list i'd say i I don't really care for a lot of these movies probably before the summer really kicks off we'll do another one of these of my most anticipated movies for the the, the summer of 2016 but hit us up let us know what you think do you think this list is pretty spot on or what would you change uh let us know comments down below of course at words from my face on twitter google blogs and facebook always good ways of getting a hold of us (laughs) 